and I wanted to start off today by sharing what to do in the first one to three month period of transitioning to natural hair. What's up YouTube and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Amina and today I'm going to be hopping back into sharing how to transition from heat damaged or relaxed hair to fully natural, curly, kinky, coily hair. So I started my journey about two or three years ago on YouTube with sharing how I went from having my heat damaged, relaxed hair and transitioning into having curly hair. And I was not somebody who was on board with the big chop just because it didn't really fit into my lifestyle, my head shape. So I wanted to kind of share the steps that really helped me transition in about a year to a year and a half. My journey was a little bit shorter than even what I was expecting. And I did share some tips and tricks with you guys on how to transition as efficiently as possible. But since then, a lot of you have still come back with questions on how to start your transition or when you're in that kind of awkward stage, what do I do now? And I realized that there are definitely different stages of transitioning. In this little series, I wanted to break down each sort of chapter of transitioning to help you in whatever stage that you're in. So this is probably gonna be a three part and I wanted to start off today by sharing what to do in the first one to three month period of transitioning to natural hair. So without further ado, let's hop into it. So the very first thing that you wanna focus on is your mindset. It's already huge to come to the final decision that you are going to transition to natural hair. I'm sure that you've already thought about maybe shaving off your head and starting anew, which is totally fine and probably easier if you do wanna do it that way, but there are also some challenges that come along with that. So settling on the decision to transition is totally fine too. I did it and was able to pretty much maintain my length throughout the entire process and for me it was just an easier choice for my lifestyle for the shape and size of my head it's a, a lot of different factors so don't let anybody bully you into thinking that you have to shave your head to start over once you have come to that place what you need to remember is patience patience is so very important and we're going to get into all the little things that you need to do during this one to three month period where you're starting out but making sure that you remember that this first step is not going to look like the following three months after that this is really allowing your hair to grow the hair grows at about a quarter to half an inch each month so remember that you're probably during this time period only going to see about this much new growth in the first three months. So don't get discouraged when your hair is not curling up immediately or you've done deep conditioning treatments and no heat for a full two months and your hair isn't wavy yet. That's not how it's gonna be. It's gonna be a process, so remember that. Another thing to remember is that you do have to commit to breaking up with heat. So put away your flat irons, your curling irons, give them to your sister, give them to your mom, your cousin, whoever you need to give them to, to hide them from yourself. But during this time period, we are not reverting back. You have a lot of really great options that you can do during this time. And it doesn't just have to be bun day for three months. So don't worry there. So once you've got your mind right, you've done your deep breathing and you're ready to go, there are a few things that are going to be a regular part of your routine. That is doing your wash day once a week, deep conditioning once a week, and making sure as much as possible that all of your products are sulfate free and that's going to be your cleansers. Uh, usually there are not any sulfates that are gonna be found in the cream products that you use, but sulfate free, silicone free, and ideally paraben free as well. Now, luckily, most curly brands have listened to us for these requests, but unfortunately not all of them have, especially a lot of the more recent ones that are kind of trying to get into the natural hair game, but have slipped in some silicones into every product. But we won't go there. We're just gonna look at our ingredient list and make sure that we have 
everything that you need to get started. Just a quick education as to why you're not gonna be using these ingredients. Sulfates you can find in detergents, you can find in your dish soap, and basically what that does is it strips all of the oils from whatever surface that it's touching. And if you're using sulfates on your scalp, that's meant to basically totally reset all of the oils in your hair, which is stripping all of the oils from your natural hair as well as your scalp. So sulfates are not always the worst thing and sometimes can be useful if you do have a lot of buildup and you need to kind of strip that from your hair. But we want to make sure that we're avoiding products altogether that are going to be causing that type of buildup. So using a gentler shampoo like the sulfate free ones or if you're doing co-washes which are basically cleansing conditioners. Those are gonna be a lot more gentle on your hair and during this time when your hair is a lot more fragile, it's going to reduce breakage, which is the most important thing because your hair is going to be in more of a breakable state as you have two different textures growing in and you've got your curly hair attached to your straight heat damage or chemical damage tear. As for silicones, silicones are an ingredient that basically coats your hair to protect it or lock in moisture as a lot of products might say. However, the kicker is that when you are locking in everything in your hair with that kind of barrier, then you're also preventing it from taking in anything else. So as you know, your natural hair is going to be just a little bit on the drier side. Our oil production in our scalp sometimes is a little bit lower than other hair textures. And then also with the texture of our hair, it takes a lot longer for our natural oils to come down the actual length of our hair. So it's really common to need to refresh your hair through the week, whether it's misting your hair with water or a little bit of oil to retouch your ends to make sure that they're not dry and they're not breaking. So silicones are basically just doing this to anything good that we're gonna be trying to do through the middle of the week to keep our hair nice and moisturized. So we want to avoid those products as well. I can include some information about parabens either in the comments or if they'll fit somewhere in the video. Thank you to all of the natural hair brands that I will recommend a handful of them that do keep these ingredients out of their products and keep our natural hair and transitioning hair healthy. Now that you know the basics, what we're gonna talk about next is your wash day during this one to three month period. Like I said, I'm recommending that you, you probably do your wash day once a week and I would say no more than two times a week. I know some of you are super active and you are not able to go a whole week without washing your hair and I totally understand, but what you wanna do on each wash day once a week is use a deep conditioner. So ideally your process is shampoo, sulfate free, conditioner, silicone free, and a deep conditioner that's also silicone free. Your deep conditioner, you don't wanna use for longer than 20 to 30 minutes. I know sometimes we wanna get super ambitious and see if we can do maybe an hour or half a day or sleep with it overnight and Sometimes your hair will respond well to these longer treatments, but over time what can happen is you can get hydro fatigue or waterlog your hair when you are putting in too much moisture and leaving it in, you're oversaturating it. So we don't wanna do that. 20 to 30 minutes is a perfect amount of time to deep condition your hair and then you will move on to your styling process. Before we get into stylers, I just wanna note that I would not recommend doing protein treatments every single time during this. So I know there's a ton of amazing deep conditioners out there right now. I would recommend that if you do like to do protein treatments to only do them once a month and then to use a protein free or at least light on protein deep conditioners every other wash day. Now, if you do have a little bit of drier hair, then I would say that shampoos, you might only need to use them every other week and you can do a co-wash every other week in between. So a co-wash is basically like a cleansing conditioner. So things like Diva Curl No Poo, um, I think Carol's Daughter also has some great ones. There's a lot of really good co-washes on the market and those are just gonna be a little gentler. You're still gonna cleanse your scalp with those and and kind of pull it down the length of your hair. That's going to make sure that your hair doesn't dry out if it isn't responding well to shampooing once a week. Now we're on to styles. 
So I know a lot of people feel like during their awkward transition period where you don't really know what to do with your hair because you can't straighten it like you used to, but you still have all of these straight pieces that look a little wild, you think you have to revert to doing buns every single day but that is not the case. Now, there are a lot of super cute bun styles that you can do, and I am all about bun day because it's super easy, but you can also have a lot of fun with styles doing Bantu knots. Bantu knots, I would say, debatably look best on transitioning hair because you have all of that heat or chemical damage that have caused your ends to be straight, and so you're basically just giving those straight hairs the direction to become a little bit more wavy and loose without having to use heat. Definitely check out some YouTube tutorials of Bantu knots if you haven't already. And all you're really gonna need for that style is a solid curling cream. With that style, I know I said break up with heat, but you can blow dry your hair for that style just to make sure that it's nice and dry if you need to speed it up. With my Bantu knot styles, I would sometimes wear it down. I would love to do the half up, half down look because it just has like that beautiful wave and you feel like you kind of curled your hair, but you didn't and you feel even better about that. And for the first one to three months, sometimes you could push it for a little bit longer. These styles look really, really good. So don't sleep on them. If you don't get it right the first one or two tries, don't give up. You will get there. I know that it's super uncomfortable to just go through wash day over and over again and you're not seeing results. So if you do want to put your hair away in a protective style for a month or two, that's totally fine. And braids are a great option. Don't recommend super heavy protective styles during this time, but if you go with some smaller braids and just make sure to keep those moisturized while your natural hair is tucked away, then that is going to set you up for success for when you take them down and continue on in this transitioning journey. Now on to products. I know Instagram and YouTube are gonna make you feel like you need all of these million products to get started, but I promise that you don't. Really all that you're going to need is a solid curling cream, a good gel, and a silicone-free oil to get you started. Some good curling creams that I would recommend would be the Shea Moisture Curl Enhancing Smoothie. This was my go-to holy grail product throughout pretty much my entire transition, but like I've mentioned in previous videos, your hair can sometimes get used to products if you've been using them a lot. So if you do need to go to some other stylers, I really recommend the Eden Body Works Curl Defining Cream is amazing. Um, smells like coconut. Also the Curls Curl Souffle is a fantastic and that's gonna be a great product when you move on to doing twist outs and flexi rod sets as you move into the next chapter of your transition. Also, I've heard really good things about the As I Am Double Butter Cream. Any of these cream stylers are going to be really helpful when you are trying to smooth out your styles. So whether you're doing flexi rods or as you are putting your hair away in a bun, um, these are all gonna be great. As for hair gels, you won't need those for the Bantu Knot styles because gels do tend to make your hair damp and sometimes revert your hair back. So gels are going to be more so useful when you're moving into your other sort of protective transitioning styles. But there are a handful of gels that I think are going to be great. You only really need one good gel to hold you down and gels do last for a while. So I know people have sort of love-hate relationship with Eco Styler and I know the ingredients list have, has kind of come under fire. I was an Eco Styler olive oil girl for the longest time, but have since transferred over to the Jamaican Black Castor Oil Flaxseed Eco Styler Gel. Um, I do like that. Sometimes though, I do notice that it feels like it does coat my hair a little bit more than I would like it to. So some other gels that I would recommend would be the Eden Body Works Gel from their original coconut line. All of these products that I'm mentioning, by the way, you can get at Target, Walmart, CVS, the Curls, Blueberry Bliss Control Jelly, that one works great. And also the Camille Rose Naturals Curl Maker Gel. So you've got some options there. 
go into Target, test them out. If you do find that these products don't work for you after the first one or two tries, just make sure you hold on to your receipt because you can return these and exchange them for one that maybe would be a better fit. I'm not trying to take all of your coins or tell you you have to spend all your coins. You really only need, like I said, a few products to hold you down during this period. As far as oils go, I would strongly recommend really just going for like a straight up oil, like one ingredient type of oil at the beginning. Oils like sweet almond oil, avocado oil, olive oil has a little bit of a rough scent and I'm not a big fan of if you're putting it in after your wash process, so I won't recommend that. Coconut oil may work well for you, it may not, so trial and error again. It didn't work well for my hair during my transition, but now my hair loves it, so it's all really up to what your hair tells you and you will know pretty much as soon as you try. Grapeseed oil is also another great one. The way that I would use oils is after applying my curling cream, I would always put an oil over the top of it just to seal it in. And unlike silicone products that will then lock in the product, then also kind of shield out anything from the outside, this will still allow your hair to take in moisture throughout the week. So almost wrapping up, but wanted to talk about trimming your hair during this time period. So as you know, your hair is damaged, we've accepted it, but you do wanna make sure that any chance you get, you are looking at your hair, kind of taking inventory, and you can either go in for your trims of your split ends, just to make sure that you're starting out as fresh as possible in this journey, or you can kind of go through yourself or maybe ask your mom or your sister or friend to do it and just make sure that you hit all of those split ends. I'm not asking you to take off five inches, but whatever you feel comfortable with, let those pieces go now because those are ultimately what are going to hold you back from retaining length as your hair is growing. Like I said, please, please keep in mind that this one to three month period is kind of awkward because you're really, really learning, but please don't get discouraged. I think this is probably my most asked question when people do decide to transition. They get really frustrated and feel like they need to just give up or they're doing something wrong or their hair is, is just not gonna curl back up. I experienced this too. It was really uncomfortable, but you have to remember the ultimate goal is getting your hair back to a healthy state. It's just gonna take some time. Make sure that through every step of this process that you are being kind to yourself, you are being loving to your hair, um, and just really focusing on taking good care of it. So I hope that information was helpful. I will be back with a part two and part three for this transition journey, but welcome to the club. I am seriously so excited for you because you are not only just embarking on a journey to change your hair, but also transform just your relationship with yourself. I think, I mean, I know I'm kind of a sensitive, feely type of person sometimes, but I really do think that this is a spiritual journey as well as a physical transformation, just because you're coming to love and accept how your hair comes out of your head naturally, who you are naturally, and that's truly a beautiful thing, and I think a step in the right direction, a big step into the direction of self-love. So welcome, I'm so excited, and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions, but of course, go in the comments, let me know if you have any other questions, and make sure you support and uplift the other people in the comments who might be new on this journey as well, because there are strength in numbers, because I know that it is a struggle. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.